Hello, my dear Blogo files. So today I'm going to continue my experiment in um, moving into vlogging with a green screen. It's quite a steep learning curve for me, I can tell you. I decided to pick a few random topics today because one of the things I have been thinking about is what do I talk about while I'm doing my vlog? And I've come up with the idea of um, selecting random topics. I won't go into the details of how I do that. I have my own little secret scheme. Anyway, one of the things I wanted to talk about is um, condensation in relation to motor cars on frosty mornings. And uh, this applies to me in England. We don't have severe frosts and severe minus degree centigrade situations like they do in some parts of the world, for example uh, Canada and places like that. But, um, well, uh, we have, we, we go below zero, you know, and of course we're not particularly used to it. In, we don't have a whole system geared up for dealing with snow and um, slippery road surfaces. Uh, we, we have a minimal system that uh, gets brought out when it has to, but um, we don't have fleets of snow plows in every city or anything like that. Just one or two, I suppose. Anyway, I don't precisely know the details of that. But I discovered uh, today that um, my problem, I thought I was going to have to I spray off this hard frost on the windscreen or scrape it off. I have one of those scraper things, you know. And I got to work and it didn't seem to be working at all. And then I suddenly realised that it, the ice was on the inside of the car. And of course I'd got the engine going so that would gradually warm up and thaw the, the ice from the windscreen and so forth. But um, I was a bit floored by that because I'd expected the ice to be external to the car. And of course the reason why it must have been on the inside was that uh, water vapour inside the car had become cold and frozen. Uh, the air inside it had, anyway. And um, so I resorted to, uh, once it was warmed up a bit, I uh, got the, the, the moisture off the screen using kitchen roll. And uh, that seemed to be a good technique. Well, I don't know. I think that possibly could be one of the most uninteresting topics for a vlog that you've probably ever come across. So I'll carry on and think about the problem of what did you, the, the problem of what do you say when you're talking to yourself, uh, putting out a, a vlog. And one of the things that occurred to me was um, it might be a bit like one could adopt the approach of the social anthropologist. And I could imagine that I actually am from another planet. You don't know this because what's happened is I've been dropped down onto the Earth uh, by a space travel and I have been uh, deposited into a my, my, my body, my, my robotics are extraordinarily lifelike. And I've been deposited into the body of a, a, a man of a certain age, you know, moving, moving on in years, shall we say. And my job uh, is to try to work out what the rules oper that operate in this society on Earth, what, what these rules are, how they govern our social interaction, what we do, what we think, how we are the rules governing our existence, if you like. Well, I haven't actually made any progress with that, but this is a meta discussion here. I'm not here to talk to you about what I think the rules of our existence are. I'm here to say that that is one approach to what to say when blogging, or vlogging, shall I say. I keep calling it blogging because I do have a little blog, although I've neglected it rather over the past year or so. Yes, so that's another possibility 
that I will think about over the coming days or so uh, and maybe develop a lot, something along those lines. Um, the other topic that I pulled out of the hat this is all very random you see I'm quite interested in dice decisions and so forth and I tip my hat to Luke Reinhardt who wrote a book called The Dice Man which was very popular when I was a postgraduate student many years ago popular amongst a few of uh, uh, my, myself and my colleagues and so forth and um, anyway yes so the third thing to come out of the dice throw was um, collar stiffeners. They're these little bits of white plastic. Unfortunately, I don't think there's one in this shirt that I can take out. Um, and they're, they're not very long. They're about this, you know, about as long as, as this, um, these two joints in my finger, perhaps, if that, not even that length. But they, um, they're white plastic with a pointy end and a round end, and you slip them into a little container in your shirt collar and uh, that then makes the collar stiff. I realise why this shirt hasn't got a collar stiffener. It's because it's buttoned down. I love buttoned down collars. Very interesting idea. I don't think they existed when I was a boy. So anyway, yeah, collar stiffeners. And what happened is, this week, I lost one uh, in the wash. And uh, I couldn't find it at first. And I sorted all my clothes out and I went through the dryer. And I could not find, I, I knew I had lost one because I found a rogue single collar stiffener uh, inhabiting my bundle of washed clothes, just lying there. Um, and I thought, where is its mate? Because they always come in pairs. And I could not find it. So that troubled me a little bit because I didn't like to think of my collar stiffener um, going through one of the little holes in the washing machine and clogging up the works, as it were. What harm could a little plastic collar siphoner do when it was let loose, I asked myself. Ah, well, not to worry. OK, I think that this is enough of that experiment. I do hope it's worked, and I will... Uh, speak to you another time, my dear Vlogo files. So bye for now.